I'm sending around, because I'm not as cool as these people with you know PowerPoint presentations and everything else, is a generic algae bloom handout. And I'm going to explain why. Cyanobacteria, for the longest time, was called blue-green algae. How many people realize it's not even an algae? Do you know scientists for the longest time didn't realize it wasn't an algae? It's actually a bacteria. So anyway, moving right along. What, what, it, what this did that was really cool, and, and no one's going to believe me, but um, cyanobacteria is actually really cool. Anyone have any idea how old it is? 3.5 billion years old. The Some oldest of these, oldest, I was just, oh, he stole my thunder. Ah. It is the only, oldest known fossil in the world is cyanobacteria. Obviously, it evolved over the millions and billions of years, just like anything else does. And obviously, it has many branches to it. And everyone says, I hate, who hates black blue green algae because it closes your pond? Everyone hates it, right? Does everyone know that the atmosphere and air we breathe today would not exist without blue green algae? That the original formation of the earth and the oxygen that fills our atmosphere that allowed all of us plants and animals to grow was all from blue green algae. The, the atmosphere, the air we breathe would not exist today. The atmosphere on earth wouldn't exist today. Millions of years ago, it was a blue green algae that created the very atmosphere we live in today. So, okay, blue green algae stinks, but it actually is good. We wouldn't be here without it. So, what's the problem? So, why is blue green algae a problem? It's quantity. Just like anything else in the world, just like our diets, just like anything else, quantity and balance. And obviously, right now, the, the balance is way out of whack. We have a very big balance problem in our in our aquifer. And I actually thrilled that the two speakers went before us because both of them have way more acronyms after their name than I do, so they're wicked smart. So I'm going to defer to them as being wicked smart. But I hope what you took away from what they said it is this, and this is what I take away whenever someone wants to save our aquifers or our ponds. That's the problem right there. I see it. It's never that simple. The problem with our aquifer has so many factors and so many variables and anyone who's studied science or higher mathematics knows there's no such a thing as a one plus one equals two. So it's easy to say, and one of the popular things to say in Pembroke is, oh right over there, it's the cranberry bogs. It's all their fault. If it wasn't for them, our water would be perfect. Oh nay nay. Oh no, it's over there, it's the septic systems. If it wasn't for the septic systems and the, the, the homes being built in the 60s and all the homes around the pond, our water system would be perfect. Oh nay nay. Oh no, it's, it's over here. It's the runoff from these streets. It's the runoff from the streets. If it was just the street runoff and that just stopped, it would be aces. Nay, nay. nay. <laughs> and it's the dams. It's the dams. Those dams. If we just got rid of every single dam, it would all be perfect. And even these, these fine scientists will tell you, you can take out all the dams, but if you don't address these other issues, it's not going to be perfect again. The problem is humanity, over a system of 100 years, has changed the aquifer. We've changed how the water moves, we've changed how it recycles, we've changed the nitrogen load on the water, we've changed the phosphorus load on the water, and we do it every single day and half of us don't even mean to do it. Every bit of road runoff, every bit of yard runoff, every bit of septic runoff, every bit of vegetation that goes into our ponds that's not removed, all the water we drink from it as a human and don't allow to flow through the whole aquifer, and that's again why I love these fine folks slides, it, it changes everything. So it's really simplistic to say, oh, it's just this, and if we just fix this, then it'll be perfect. The other thing it's really easy to say is, if we just do this, if we just dredge, if we just clean, if we just stop the nitrate or phosphorus load, it'll all be clean. Keep in mind, we did this over 100 years. Anyone know how old Mayflower Grove was that brought everyone to Pembroke and living on the waters? Anyone? Come on. I know some of you know. 100 years. Exactly. It was, it was about 1902-ish that Mayflower Road was established, which started the mass exodus out of the city, which brought everyone down to living in Hanson, Halifax, Pembroke, on the ponds. Um, who actually lives on the ponds? Come on, I want a hand. Who lives on a pond? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, who lives in an actual antique that they can say the cottage or house they live in? Okay, you live in that, you're not on a pond, but you're in an actual antique. But a lot of these homes, a lot of these cottages, a lot of these homesteads, whatever you want to call them on the ponds, are easily, 60s or older. And some of them, some of the ones we have dating in Bryantville are easily 100 years old. There's at least three that I know of that are still standing today. You know, remodeled and reused, but still exist. The point is you don't undo 100 plus years of damage. You don't undo 100 plus years of human density, water usage, and waste impact on a pond and say, oh, in five years, well, my pond isn't crystal clean. Huh, if you didn't clean your house for 100 years, and then you went at it with a scrub brush for a weekend, is it going to be clean? Probably not. 
Probably not. You're probably going to need a lot more tools, equipment, time, and money to clean that up. So the other question I get asked all the time is, okay, so why are we having a blue-green algae problem now? There's a lot of reasons. A lot of them I've already mentioned. But the biggest ones are probably climate change. They're probably the human footprint and impact. And then this year we just had weather that didn't work with us. We had a lot of hot, dry weather. And then we had the worst kind of rain. Does anyone know that heavy rain is the worst kind of rain you can put on an ecosystem? You don't want that. Heavy rain is horrible. It does all the wrong things. It surges water. It carries lots of sediments. It carries lots of nutrients. We don't want that. We want lots of gentle rains all summer long if we could get them. That's the ideal thing for an ecosystem to do its best. On top of that, as these nice folks have alluded to, anyone know how many communities drink Pembroke's water? Like directly, we have a big Mai Tai bowl. Everyone likes Mai Tais? Come on, everyone likes Mai Tais. Yeah. How many straws can you put in the Mai Tai before the Mai Tai goes dry quick, right? Uh, everyone got a straw? I've got, I've got a straw. Oh, you too? Okay. So, so we have this big Mai Tai bowl. We have seven. We have seven straws in the Mai Tai bowl. And now that Mai Tai bowl, as he, he nicely showed us in the, the Silver Lake slide, well, the Mai Tai bowl is half empty. No big shock there. The Mai Tai bowl is half empty. So the Mai Tai bowl, whatever's in it, alcohol and everything else is more concentrated. All of our nutrients, all of our organics, all of our phosphoruses, all of our nitrates, all the bad things, as we keep taking out the water, evaporation, drinking, processing, pulling, pulling, every which way, are now concentrated. So every bad behavior we don't want in our pond is now magnified. You know, everyone, anyone ever have a dirty dish that they keep soaking in the sink with water and they leave it too long and they come back and they're like, oh, that looks really gross and the water's halfway down? Yes, I do too. It's the same thing with our ponds. It's no different. The behavior's no different. So what we saw this year, we saw low pond levels. The ponds have never recovered, in my opinion. And I'll take, the, again, how many of you live on the pond? I have not seen a recovery from, from 2016. Everyone agree the ponds, when they drive by, the beaches, the rivers, and everything they go to, is still significantly low, right? Silver Lake's not recovered, but maybe not even quite halfway, I'm going to say, from where it was at that low point in 2016. Yeah, uh, almost four feet, right? Now. Okay, so there you go. So that is just about halfway. Little Sandy, that would be quote unquote my home pond if I had one. That was never low, and it still is staying at that low level. So what happens is you concentrate all that runoff, and now we have nice hot weather. And we treat our ponds, and we get our algae under control. And then everyone remember, we had a little bit of a rain event, didn't we? A little bit of rain, a lot of rain. So now, then we have hot weather right after all that rain. And I was surprised at how many times my phone rang and said, Hey, we've got a bloom again. And of course, I'm like the kid in Home Alone. <laughs> we did. Of course we're going to. The, the, the math and the science tells us there's no choice. We basically drew down our river. We concentrated all of our contaminants. Then we dumped some hot, dry weather on it and a ton of sunshine. It would have been, it would have been, it would have been mathematically impossible not to have a major, a major algae bloom. And the other thing is once the phosphorus and the alum and the other things get used up and bound out and drop out, there's just more coming in. And especially after a large rain event. I'm sorry. So why would it just be our pond and not the ponds across all of Massachusetts? It is. Everyone says that. It is ponds all across Massachusetts. Anyone got Google? Sit down and Google. Google bluey green algae in Massachusetts. When our blue green algae um, problem was discovered in Oldham Pond, anyone have any idea how many, how many um, Ponds across the state were involved. The, the, Vanessa Wandel was in, in charge of it for the state with a big consortium. Do you, have, do you remember how many? I could say over 100. It, it was 100 ponds, but actually 27 were in the study. Most of them were in southeast Massachusetts. And, and an excellent question of why are Pembroke's ponds so impacted? Because of the slides that these nice folks just showed you. Because half the state's drinking our water. Because we're providing, well, I, I'm, I'm, quote me if I'm, stop me if I'm wrong. You guys probably know the numbers better. Brockton, Abington, Rockland. East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater to some extent. I'm, I'm forgetting a town. Thank you. And how many hundreds of thousand people? The last number I was told we're, we're providing over 500,000 households water are directly linked back to Pembroke, give or take. Right. It's 10 million gallons a day to Brockton alone. To, to Brockton alone. Everyone think about that. 10 million gallons originating at Silver Lake. And Silver Lake is the bottom basin of how many rivers? And most of them, again, originate in Pembroke. Well, that is a, excuse me, S ton of water to suddenly leave an aquifer. 
And now what I can't speak to that these nice folks did is, is how that water is impacting the streams. And I'd imagine that you guys see a huge impact um, downriver because of the lack of water, lack of water over dams, lack of water for accessibility for fish fry and everything else. And I would assume the Jones River probably remains low they, to this day. They take, yeah, they take more water than we have left. Everyone think about that. They for take, free. for free, they take more right. water than makes down the Jones River watershed today. But they don't take from Oldham? I'm sorry? They don't take from Oldham? No, but Oldham Pond Oldham feeds, it's, it's a chain. It's indirect, indirect, indirectly they do. Indirectly, indirectly they do. Oldham, Furnace, Big Sandy, and Silver Lake are all connected. How many people know here Stetson is not? Does everyone here know Stetson is not connected to that water chain? Stetson is actually connected to Halifax's water chain. It's very convoluted. It goes down through a series of primitive bodies. Those are all out of use right now. Those bodies are all But it, it's, it's not connected to the water you're talking about, but Stetson Pond flows to Mount Hansen, which goes yes. back in the summer. And right it right comes back around. It's, it's, it's the same chain, but it's not our chain. But it goes through the bogs, right? And then it's right. Like, Exactly. Whole, whole separate chain, but the, but the same, the same. as I go back to the Mai Tai Bowl example, yes, it follows a different path, and yes, it's not connected with those ponds, but it's the same Mai Tai Bowl. You can only stick so many straws in the Mai Tai Bowl before it's gone. Does Brockton help pay to treat the ponds? Nothing. No. No. I cannot find, I submitted a public records request to Brockton Water Supply to provide any documentation of um, financial payments, support, or otherwise done to clean up any of the watershed from Silver Lake north or upriver, and I, I received a response that no such document exists. More payments for remediation for environmental damage. <laughs> Correct. I only asked about the water specifically, but that was my, my request that was met with there are no such records. And I asked DEP that too, interestingly enough, and of course they too confirmed. Um, so I've actually gone to, they talk about the, the watershed commission that exists, I've actually attended those Plymouth Brockton um, water consortium meetings. Um, I appreciate the financial burden, and, and everyone knows, everyone knows Pembroke's under a financial burden, right? It's no different in these other towns. Brockton is not, depending on who you listen to, flush with cash. No one's flush with cash, and that's why the state, you know, diverted the water over to them to supply the people, because their goal was to take care of the people. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not like there's this big pile of money sitting somewhere to solve the problem. The question then comes back to, should the watershed continue to be, I'll use still some certain terms, depleted? Uh, I don't use the term raw, but depleted or diminished in favor of supplying water to a district that now has other water sources. Are people aware that Brockton has another water source? Anyone, anyone, anyone name it? Come on, impress me, thank you. Okay, Aquarium is up and able to run. Does anyone know Does anyone know how much water comes out of Aquarium to, to serve people? None, exactly. It's not online, it's not being used because its cost is higher. So there is a source for water. They pay for it every year. They come take it. So there's a lot of questions here. So now the question that I hope everyone in this room is asking themselves, well, what on earth am I supposed to do about yes. it? How, how do I fix this? Right. Oh, goodies. I love it. I love it. Bonus <laughs> question time. One, how many people have ever talked to their legislator about any of this and said, hey, this was done by legislation, folks. The legislature, our state reps, our senators, wrote the article that gave Silver Lake to another community. Guess what? If we got enough of them on board, guess what they could do? Write another write something letter. Else. Okay? That's the first thing. The other thing is, is if you live on the ponds, live like it's your backyard. I hope if you live on the ponds or near the ponds, I still to this day, I cringe, I go out there, I do the water tests, I drive around, I do the perk tests, I see what's going on. I still see people entering, emptying their lawnmower bags into the pond. I still see people raking their leaves into the pond. I still see people out with their fertilizers right up to the edge of the pond. Because my word, I better have a golf course lawn if I'm living on the pond. Does everyone know that yes, having a golf course lawn right up to the edge of the pond, I'm not saying you can't have a lawn. I'm saying up to the edge of the pond is a really bad idea. That you want to, you want to have a buffer you know, of at least 20, 25 feet where you're not doing stuff like that. Let the natural stuff grow. I, and I, I'm going to now defer to the scientists. What do we think of the water reads and anything else? How much cleansing did they do? Someone did an analysis and it was brilliant. I don't remember. The water reads and the natural aquatic vegetation at the, at the edge, what kind of cleaning it does. I mean, someone did an analysis. 
Yeah, they like cut down the nutrient, whatever, in the half, just yeah. like in that yeah. vegetation before you get to the water. Did anyone know that? That was the coolest thing I ever saw. They did a whole test of running nutrient-rich water with no buffer off of green lawn right into a pond and measured the materials in it. And then they had another house with a buffer with the water reeds and the other things. And they tested the water off that, ran the sand lawn, and it was halfway cleaner two days later. I'm like, that blew my mind because the natural vegetation at the edge of the, the pond was drinking it up. Who knew, right? Plants actually clean stuff. Who knew that? They clean air and everything. It's really cool. So at the end of the day, we're, we're seeing blue-green for, for a dozen reasons. We're seeing it for lack of water, and then the lack of water does two things. One, it concentrates. Two, it, it, it takes away the flow. Anyone ever notice streams that flow well are crystal clear and streams that are stagnant? We basically have taken Furnace and, and Golden Pond and they're now virtually stagnant. You used to be able to see a flow, especially in the spring. Anyone live on those, those ponds where those culverts are? I know you know those culverts well. The water used to charge through there. Now most of the time, what, even in the spring, it's a trickle, right? Uh, we haven't measured that since we ran yep, into the yep, water. Yep. And uh, mid-summer, we had uh, early spring, as little as 30,000 gallons coming from over from the front. Yep. Amazing small amount. Yep. It's up to, say, a million five uh, in the end of the road. Okay. We have gas in from the barber shop, so we have a million and a half. And we only had 30,000 gallons going out over the dam with the back of the furnace. Everyone now understand that, what that means? Having been rocking now, having been rocking. We lost almost half a million gallons of water. Pulling into having been rocking, it's 40 feet deep. Yeah. That's like crazy. It's under the road 100 feet. That's crazy. That. And they're not on the trucks. Nobody said a word about having been rocking. So anyway, going back to that, so what that means is we're having a concentration. We're getting the road runoff, we're getting the property runoff, we're getting the septic waste, which by and large there's a myth out there that no one's replaced the septic system. I can tell you right now I've seen enough to know. I was on the board for 15 years, I've been the agent for seven. There are very few homes around the pond that have not upgraded and, up and replaced their septic systems um, to, to today's technology or close to it. So that, that there's a myth out there that we still have a million cesspools in Pembroke, that's just not true. That's just not true. Since 1995, it's been almost impossible um, to transfer a property with a septic system. It destroys it. We got two realtors here. It destroys the property value. No one does it. So uh, actually, I lied. I have one, two, three. I have a bunch of realtors here. But anyway, um, and, and within within the setback of the ponds, it's not allowed anyway. So unless you have a property that hasn't changed hands, no joke, in 30 years, it's been updated. Okay. So we, we've kind of addressed that issue. We can never do anything about the property density. The property density around the ponds is what it is. The DPW, I want to, I want to give some shout outs right now. The DPW has done an amazing job lining our catch basins. Um, and, and when they're given the money, they are doing the work. They're not 100% lined, but we're getting there. They're mostly lined around the ponds. I think we're down to about 15% that still need to be dealt with. Um, property runoff, that goes back to we need to do more education with property owners. If anyone with the watershed is saying, what can I do? Talk to your neighbors about this. It matters. Every little bit matters. Um, we need to talk to our legislatures about our water flow, about our water usage, about where our water is going. And the last thing, I'm going to make a personal pitch. I need you all to show up at town meeting. Okay? I need people at town meeting. Because I'll tell you this, I'll tell you that, and, and you see a couple ladies smiling and nodding, so I'm going to point them out and they're going to get embarrassed. Kathleen McCarthy has done an amazing job looking for grants, helping to write articles, but Kathleen McCarthy alone cannot pass an article on town meeting floor. She can write great stuff, she can find the money, but if I don't get 150 of you to stand there at town meeting and say, yes, we need to do this, it's all for nothing. The other lady that I want to point out, she's going to get embarrassed, is Sabrina Chilcock, because she's written some amazing articles. Yes. And again, the same thing is, your government is as only as good as you support it. If you're not there supporting your government, I can work hard, Kathleen can work hard, Sabrina can work hard, our Hearing and Fishery Commission can work hard, but if we're not supported, supported with your vote and with your money, we can work hard all day long and we might as well just be sitting there picking up rocks on the side of the river, because that's all it's going to do. So the biggest thing anyone can do is show up to town meeting. And if you can, talk to a neighbor or a friend and say, hey, let's go to town meeting together. I don't care if you show up with your Dunkin' Donuts, a box of donuts, and a picnic and sit there and have a grand old time. I endorse that, but it matters. Your participation matters, your vote matters, whether or not you call your legislature matters. And I think these people will tell you the same thing. Grassroots matters. Everyone says, I'm one person. What difference does it make? BS, it matters. 
Every big movement in this country is started by one person that did something that got attention. So every single one of you has a chance to impact your entire watershed and change everything. The Jones River watershed, I'm sure, was, it was started by what? A handful of people, and now look at what it is today. And how long did it take you to do that? Started in 1985. So there you go. And now look at what they are today. started in 1970. See? There's no reason why this can't be done. These aren't century-old organizations, but look at what they are today. And everyone knows, everyone likes to say, oh, boom to the Water Street Project in Pembroke. Everyone knows, oh, we don't like water. But look at the impact that the, the, the Rivershed Protection Association had on that project. So there is something that can be done as a purely grassroots you know, situation to change all that. I'm happy to do the work. I'm not afraid. I'm out there on the pond. I take the samples. No one has ever picked up a phone to call me and said, I don't have time to talk to you. I don't have time to explain this. I will go out. I will look at your water. I will walk on your property with you. I will investigate your neighbors. I'll do whatever it takes. But I can't do it alone. All right? I, I'm one vote. I'm one employee. I'm one vote. And in case you don't know, I have a whole bunch of other things I do. But with your help, and if you get all your neighbors to help, we can change this. Exactly, my 49 friends. Anyone, anyone have an idea what the average attendance at town meeting is? The average attendance over the last 10 years? 149. No, actually, it is a little higher than that. I, I took the numbers. I read, it's 170 is the average attendance. We had a couple spike years because of things. I want you to think about that. Does anyone know what the Watershed Association membership was at its highest point? Can anyone tell me the number? No one? No, we have 352 is what, what I was told. So what that means is this watershed could control all of Pembroke's town meeting if it wanted to. Wow. If you wanted to, and there was one meeting, and I know you were at it, you were at the meeting when we um, did the, um, we had the larger article that just started the Olden Pond treatment the year of the cyanobacteria. bacteria. Do you know how many, how, do you remember how many um, watershed members we had there? Do you remember when the article came up, what happened? Were you there at that meeting? It's okay to say no, I just don't. So Ray Holman was. And Ray Holman said, Lisa, I called everybody personally. He said, I called every single member on this list over the last two weeks personally. And he went back and looked at the registered people that walked in. Do you know almost everyone he called was there? Do you know what that count was? 160. The watershed had more members at wow. town meeting than other population showed up and won that article. So that's how it's done. You know, people say, how does this get done? That's how it gets done. That's how it gets done in Pembroke. And whoever calls their state legislatures and state reps and state senators, that's how it gets done in the state. And if we make enough phone calls, you impact a change. Then we team up, we go over here, and we get our other river watershed friends to work with us, and we, we shake down all their members and we make a bunch of phone calls, and we get all them to call their state reps and their state senators, and we say, hey, if you keep taking all the water, our ponds are gonna eutrophy, they're gonna become fields, they're gonna become choked, and they're gonna become unusable. And not only will they be unusable for Pembroke, the river's gonna be unusable for Kingston, yeah. County, and then they're gonna be unusable for So thank you for indulging me. I'm gonna get off my soapbox now, but does anyone have any questions before I sit down? Specifically.